Let me tell you a common story that just be doubles web developers. So I spend a lot of time, I'm trying to build this new page, spend a lot of time working on the page, I spend a lot of time writing up the HTML and CSS and getting it all to look perfect. And it looks perfect on my web browser. And then somebody comes up to me and says, yeah, I went to that page and uh, you know, some other web browser, Internet Explorer, Safari, whatever, it looks terrible. And why does this happen? So you know, the fundamental question here is why do different web pages look different? on different web browsers. Um, and the simple reason here is that uh, web browsers have to do this very complicated task, which is they have to take the HTML and CSS that comes with the page, and they have to use that to produce some sort of you know, page document here with images and some text here and you know, maybe there's text that flows around the image and stuff like that. So this is, this is hard. And in a lot of cases what's happened over the years is that the way that these standards have evolved uh, have left some ambiguity in certain places and certain uh, web browsers have done different things. So um, you know, keep in mind, right, I mean if, if you think about, let's see here, so different web browsers we have out there in the world. We have Internet Explorer and Internet Explorer has you know, a bunch of different versions you know, up to I think 10 now. Uh, you know, we have Safari. Uh, popular on Mac. We have Chrome. Um, we have Firefox. Um, there's something called uh, Opera that I think people still use. Um, and there's probably other uh, entries on this list. And for a long time, a lot of these browsers, I mean, these browsers are, are separate projects. They're separate pieces, pieces of software. They're designed by different people. They're developed and tested by different people. And uh, particularly early on, I think, uh, in the early days of the web, the HTML standard was still being developed. It was still being fleshed out. And so there were these ambiguities that were, you know, uh, there, so people that were working on these projects they read the standard and they might have looked up a particular part of the standard and they were thinking how do I implement that so if I see a particular piece of HTML and CSS how do I decide exactly how it's supposed to look on the page and what happened is you know let's let's use an example here right so let's say that um, you know IE decided that this particular piece of HTML and CSS is going to look like this and uh, the people who were doing Safari said okay, in, in my case it's going to look like this. So here the text is wrapping around the image, here the text is only below the image. Um, and if you're a web developer, this sort of thing drives you insane because you want your page to look the same way on every different browser. I mean, it's hard enough to write web pages that look beautiful, it's even harder when you have like 60 different targets to hit because if you go out there and you look at all the different web browsers between mobile browsers, desktop browsers, different versions of the browser, there's lots and lots of, of ambiguity out there. Um, so, you know, how have we solved this problem to the degree that we solve the problem at all? Well, better standards have helped and over time I think the HTML and CSS standards have gotten more robust. So there are fewer decisions that, uh, web, that the developers of browsers have to make. Um, the other thing that's happened is a bunch of these browsers over here, and I don't know exactly the details, but a bunch of them have started to share lineage. So there's common rendering engines that at least partly have been used in several of the major web browsers out there today. So they're essentially building off a common code base and they may have made their own changes to it but more and more and part of the major web browsers is shared code that's really uh, definitely going to act the same way. So if all these browsers use the same source code they would definitely render the page in the same way and as they start to share code amongst each other and share some of the important parts of the browser it's more likely that web pages are going to look the same. Um, now, you know, an, an interesting side note to this is, is this idea of browser quirks. So if you go out there and look for that, so for, for years, and, and IE is probably the, the biggest um, the, the biggest uh, contributor to this problem. Um, you know, because you think about it from a web developer's perspective. You build a web page, um, and let's say your web page looks really good on Internet Explorer, and that's what you care about. And then Internet Explorer comes out with a new version, and that in that new version, they may have fixed some bugs in how they were processing HTML and CSS that were causing your page to look a certain way. So now your page looks different. So you don't want to fix your page, because that would actually require more work. So what do you do? You just try 
trying to tell the web browser to render in the old way. And so for years, there were versions of Internet Explorer that allow you to turn on what were called quirks. So uh, Internet Explorer would allow you to put it into quirks mode. And what, that, what did that mean? Well, that mean it would, it would essentially use an old rendering engine that was more similar to the one that was used in a previous version. And that would give you the ability to sort of reintroduce problems in the way that it, it, it uh, rendered HTML and CSS that the developers had actually fixed. So this is kind of weird. Um, overall, uh, you know, again, I mean, this is something that is incredibly frustrating for web developers. Um, so it's a huge amount of hassles, headaches. You can find whole uh, browser compatibility testing sites. For example, there's something called Browser Stack where you can go online and you can see how your web page would look in like 50 different uh, web browsers. Obviously, that's not that much fun because you find all these bugs and all these problems that you weren't anticipating. Um, but you know, this, this, this is something that I think we're going to continue to live with. I think that the differences have come down. There's more of an understanding within the web community when building tools and building different uh, web frameworks that we really want to aim for things that look have a consistent look a lot, all across a lot of different web browsers. As the standards have evolved, that's helped as well. More shared code has helped, uh, but we're certainly not completely, uh, we haven't completely finished solving this problem.